speak to your spouse, your children? Will you develop your relationship with others, those who are Muslim, those who are not Muslim? I've been faced with so many emails and so many requests of people who have embraced Islam and they say, but why sometimes some of the Muslims don't really accept us? What do we offer a person who declares shahada? When someone declares their shahada, they enter the fold of Islam, they revert to Islam. We say takbir, don't we? And then everyone says, Allahu Akbar. And that's all. After that you go away. The same brother, mashallah, he's purer than you because he accepted Islam. Now he wants to marry within your family. What do you say? No, 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 no. No, no, not at all. What does he know? He doesn't belong to my city, my village. He doesn't come from my country. He doesn't belong. But hang on, is that what Islam taught? Are you not ashamed of yourself? Subhanallah. The day he declared his shahada, you were the one who said, Takbir! So loudly, you should have just said, My brother, I love you. I declare that I love you. Really, we are equal. Subhanallah. You didn't need to scream and yell like a hypocrite. When you did not have the feeling in your heart. Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu and his brother, there is a story mentioned about their marriage, how they were from Africa. But they were married, subhanallah, within the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because of their value, because of the fact that they were believers. The Prophet, peace be upon him, speaks about character and link with the maker. If those two are in order with an individual, let them get married, subhanallah. I know I diverted a little bit to mention this because it requires a lot of restraint. And it requires discipline. And it requires a link with Allah. And it requires lots of knowledge to be able to embrace one another. To be able to save yourself from racism. Many of us think that we are not racist. But when the test comes to us, we fail it dismally. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. May that not happen to us. My brothers and sisters, you know we have difficulties amongst ourselves sometimes. You have a problem, you have an issue, someone did something bad to you, maybe your husband, maybe your wife, your children, maybe someone you worked with, maybe someone on the street. I promise you, as a Muslim, you need to consider forgiving them. Why? Because Allah says, sometimes when you forgive, and when you embrace, and when you bear patience, it is more Beneficial for you. It is better for you. Those who bear patience and forgive, indeed that is the best of affairs. The best thing you could do. It's difficult. It's not easy. Someone might say they're doing bad to me so much. They're doing bad to me so much. How can I keep forgiving them? You have a point. But consider this. If you forgive, there is a greater chance that Allah will forgive you. And if you are patient, there is a greater chance Allah will be patient with you. Amazing. And sometimes if you don't forgive, the price you shall pay might just be far greater than if you were patient for a while. I give you one example. There was a sister who contacted me some time back. She has three children. Her husband unfortunately had an affair with someone. And she told me that I need your help, but please don't tell me to be patient. Okay, you need my help, but please don't tell me to be patient. So I told her, my sister, what did he do? He did this, he did that. Wallahi, no justification. That was bad, it was unacceptable, it was terrible, it was really wrong, it was major. Has his life changed? Has he admitted? Yes, he's admitted. Has he said, I'm sorry? Yes, he has. Has his life changed in any way? Yes, it has. But I can't forgive him. Okay, no problem. If his life has changed, if he's become very transparent now in his relationships, if you are satisfied that he has made an effort, and if you are seeing within him that he's becoming a better person, then I would suggest you consider the following, that if you want a divorce, 
just because of a mistake that was made, perhaps you might become a statistic. But if you are, after seeing all this positive change, remember I'm saying this because I don't encourage people to just bear patience and bear patience and bear patience and the guy keeps on harming and harming and harming and harming. No, no, no. There is a limit beyond which nobody can tolerate it. My brothers and sisters, sometimes the difficulty is with the sisters. But a lot of the times it's with the brothers anyway. So, what would happen is, I told her, perhaps if a divorce happens, you may be a statistic whereby he will get married again, he's a happy man and he's excited, and perhaps someone much younger, and you know there is no shortage, etc., etc. And I said, what will happen to you? You will have gone away. Now you're going to struggle because you're going to fight for maintenance. You're going to fight for something else. You, people will look at you, there is a stigma attached. Unfortunately, you know, I was asked recently about divorced women. And what is the encouragement Islam has given about marrying those who are divorced? And I said, look, you don't need to look at my life or the lives of the companions for this. You can go straight to the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All his wives were previously married besides one. Did you know that? <laughs> Subhanallah. All his wives were previously married besides one. Aisha radiallahu anha. The rest of them were previously married. So there is a very high status. There is nothing wrong. If a person's been through a divorce, they are still as pure. The most pure of all chose that type or those types of women. Subhanallah, widows and divorcees. So my brothers, let's not have a misunderstanding to say someone who's divorced is actually someone who is cheap or they are low or they have lost their value. No way. Sometimes they will add value that you would never have imagined. Go back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Take a look at how he used to miss Khadija bint Khawailid radiallahu anha beyond her death. Such that there is a hadith that makes mention of the fact that he used to keep a good relationship by giving some gifts to some of her friends later on. Amazing. Who are these people? These are the friends of Khadija. And he used to send to them something sometimes. He used to remember them sometimes. So, going back to what I was saying, I told the sister, look my sister, if you bear patience, and you try to increase your link with Allah, sabr and salah, you need to make sure that you develop your link with Allah, that will occupy you, it will keep you in the right track, and bear patience, look at the man, remember Allah, Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will find within no time, things will improve. You know what? A few years down the line, I can't recall how many, but I got a message from this brother saying, My brother, I want to tell you that the advice you gave my wife was so brilliant. We went through the most difficult time, but today our relationship is far stronger than it ever was before the problem we had. Look at the gift of Allah. وَلَمَنْ صَبَرَ وَغَفَرَ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَمِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ Allah says it clearly. Whoever is prepared to bear patience and forgive, that's the best thing you could do. Subhanallah. It's the best thing you could do. There are so many verses that speak about the reward of those who bear patience in this world and the next. إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recompenses those who bear patience in an unlimited fashion. Unlimited. In this world and the next, you will see the fruits of your patience. But if you're not patient, impatient, what will happen? You taste a little bit of it. I am not saying that you need to endure oppression. I'm not saying that. I am saying that when you do good by being patient where you can be patient, Allah never ever throws the reward of those who do good. I want to give you the most beautiful example. Yusuf alayhi salam, the Prophet Joseph, may peace be upon him. I'm sure you know the story. It is amazing. Allah says in the Quran, 
نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص. We are relating to you the most beautiful of stories. That was the story of Yusuf, the Prophet Joseph. The whole chapter is named after him. And it is the only story that is found in one place from the beginning to the end. At the end, you know the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam. What did they do to him? They tried to harm him. They wanted to kill him. They put him in the well. They did this to him. They did that to him. They did so much. They literally plotted against him. They tried their luck against him. They threw him in the pit. He got up. Someone sold him. Someone bought him. Someone tried to lure him to committing a sin. They jailed him. And he continued, subhanallah, bearing patience. How many things? Plenty. One after the other. So many things. At the end, Allah made him a powerful person. He was in authority. And finally, his brothers came in. He was so delighted. But obviously, he needed to deal with this matter. He had a good heart. How many of us have a good heart? It's not too late. You can develop your heart. You can develop the qualities of your heart. You can eradicate the hatred you have. You can work on the jealousy, the envy, the ill feeling. People get jealous very quickly. It's becoming more and more common. You have a beautiful car. You have, subhanallah, a beautiful robe. People become jealous. I can't believe it. It's becoming worse. Work on these qualities. Look at Yusuf alayhi salam. He asks his brothers, Allah makes mention of it. قَالَ هَلْ عَلِمْتُمْ مَا فَعَلْتُمْ بِيُوسُفَ وَأَخِيهِ إِذْ أَنْتُمْ جَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا أَإِنَّكَ لَأَنْتَ يُوسُفُ قَالَ أَنَا يُوسُفُ وَهَذَا أَخِي قَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَتَّقِ وَيَصْبِرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Subhanallah. Allah says, He asked his brothers, Do you know what you did to Joseph and his brother when you were ignorant? Look at him blaming the devil. Look at him blaming shaitan when you were ignorant, which means I excuse you. Do you know what you did to Yusuf and his brother? They immediately thought to themselves, it's impossible for anyone to know what was done to Yusuf and his brother unless it's him himself. They looked at him and they said, what's the possibilities of you being Yusuf? Are you Yusuf? He says, yes, I am Yusuf. This is my brother. Allah has favored us. That's the word. He didn't say, I hate you guys. I'm going to fix you guys. I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to make sure I'm the leader today. I'm going to jail you. I'm gonna... That's what we would do, I think. A lot of us would do that to our own spouses, let alone someone else. We would do it. I'm going to fix you. I'll show you. I'm going to make you regret your decision, etc., etc. We have bad words. So what happens? We suffer as a result of our own plot. We struggle. We suffer. Because we have a bad plot. Don't do that. Try to find within your heart the soft spot that will look and learn from the stories Allah makes mention of. He doesn't talk about it for nothing. He talks about it because He wants you to learn a lesson from it. So He says, Allah favored us. You know what that means? In one sentence He told them, No matter what you did, what you tried from the beginning to the end, look at how Allah gave me as a direct result of your action. Had you not plotted against me from the beginning, I would not have been here. Sometimes we lose a job. We get so upset, but we don't realize Allah wants to give you a better job. Only after five years, you're going to say, Alhamdulillah, 